What's up guys? Today I wanted to share some things that I wish I knew when starting to learn Octane Render. Most of these are relatively very beginner, but I didn't know many of these for a long time when I first started, so I figured I would help you guys out. So the first thing I want to go over is light passes. Uh, light passes just allow you to control what light hits certain objects in your scene. So Let's say you wanted this red light to hit this cube, but you don't want it to hit the plane. So we're going to go to our red light here. We're going to click the light tag that's beside it. And you're going to come down to light pass ID. Um, I have this set to two right now. It's it, sh it will be at one for default, but um, we're going to change this to two because our blue light is currently on one. And then what you're going to do is you're going to right click whatever object you're trying to affect. You're going to come to octane tags, put an object tag. And in the object layer section, you'll have this light pass mark section. You're going to enable this. And we're going to check the two. So what that is doing is it's telling our light with the light pass two to not hit this object. So whatever box you have unchecked here, whatever number that light is corresponding to, it will not affect that. So since our blue light here is one, cause that's default. If we checked one, it'll do the same thing, but now we only have our red light hitting. So yeah, that's pretty much it for light passes, but yeah, this is something very simple that I didn't learn for a while. And once I did, it really upped my workflow. Because if you're new to Octane, you might find that lighting at first is, it can be very finicky. And um, you might have one light that is hitting a lot of stuff in your scene perfectly, but it might be reacting to something else really weirdly. Like, you might have a specular material or something very reflective and then something not reflective and it, it hits each material differently. And with this, you can separate everything, have different light intensities, and it'll just make for an easier experience lighting. So the next thing I want to go over is the difference between path tracing and direct lighting in Octane. So by default, your in your render settings you, you will be on direct lighting and the difference between direct lighting and path tracing is on path tracing it allows for much more light bounces so you'll get a much more bright and realistic image compared to direct lighting um, and on path tracing you have your GI clamp right here which pretty much controls how many times light is bounced around and by default this will be set all the way to max and that will usually take a lot longer to calculate everything in your scene and it can also lead to fireflies or artifacts um, with certain types of lights and materials so it's not really needed to keep it up here you can actually bring this all the way down to one which is what i would recommend It'll calculate a lot faster and also render a lot faster. And another setting that goes really well with the GI clamp for me is if you come to your Octane camera tag and you come down to camera imager, you have this hot pixel removal, which this has seemed to help me a lot when it comes to fireflies and reducing noise due to uh, light. So we render this region right here, let it load a little bit more. Right now this is all the way up, so it's not doing anything. Uh, if we bring this down, you'll see a lot of noise on these uh, diamonds start to go away. And so if we had this all the way to one and we also had our GI clamp set to max, we would have tons of noise going on in these diamonds. So. Bringing that down and bringing this down a bit, I would highly recommend. So the next thing I wanted to show you guys was a tip to help out with artifacts that you may be getting. 
I've found that a lot of times when I'm working on my characters, I get them, especially uh, in the eyes and the hair area where geometry is very close to each other. So if you open up your octane settings, you have this slider right here called Ray Epsilon. I'm not exactly sure what it does, but I just know it has to do with geometry and light rays interfering and it can create some weird uh, artifacts. So I just moved the slider over here to show you what it can do. So this hair object is giving us some weird little things uh, on his head, but if we move it down slowly, you'll see they disappear. So there's not really a specific value you need to set this at. Just kind of move it around and you'll notice the artifacts go away, but it's usually on the lower side. This next tip is how to lock your camera in Octane. So uh, for me, this took a while for me to learn, but it will save you a lot of annoyance uh, when working on your scenes. So as you can see right now, if I me set a new camera actually if i move this around you'll see in my live viewer everything moves around um but if you want to lock it you'll select your camera come to options update check and uncheck this camera box right here now when we get out of our camera we are now locked and we can work on our scene freely Here's another tip about the camera. If you have not learned how to do depth of field yet, you'll click on your camera tag and depth of field will be under thin lens. So for your focal depth, what's best to do is you can come up here, you can click this little F uh, icon and that is to select your focal depth. So you can just click on whatever geometry you have in the scene and so if I click on this ring right here, you'll see that it comes up with a prompt to choose the geometry. I also have lights back here, so it's kind of overlapping the light, so you can choose whatever you want. So we're going to choose the ring since that's the most closest object. And now we have our focal depth set. And you can come here, change the aperture. You'll see everything in the foreground and background starting to uh, get blurry. And yeah, you can just play around with that. If you still have this check camera selected, you'll need to make sure to unselect it because that will lock your camera and it will also lock anything you do to your camera. So if you change your post-processing or depth of field or any other settings, it will not show your changes. So the final thing I want to go over is render passes. I've noticed a lot of beginners who start off in Octane are not utilizing the power of render passes and a lot of their renders look very raw without them. Um, render passes can really transform your renders in post if you use them correctly and they can give you the control to change your render without having to re-render everything. So first I'll show you how to turn them on and then after I'll show you an example of a render of mine with and without render passes being used. So to turn on render passes you're going to want to go up here to your render settings, go down to Octane Renderer, come over to render passes and check this enable box. And most of your passes that you'll probably be using will be under beauty passes. So whatever you select over here will pop down below your live viewer and it's really up to you, whatever you want to use. It's kind of dependent to your scene and what you need in post, but I'll just show you guys what I have turned on for this scene. So we have uh, an emitter pass, which is just anything that's emissive. I have some diffuse passes. I have some reflection. We have refraction, which is just anything refracting light, like specular materials or glass. And then we have a shadow. And we have some light passes right here, which is really cool. Um, basically, what I showed you guys at the beginning of this tutorial, if you have light passes turned on, you can check those down here under lighting passes and each of those will be separated. So if you want to make a certain light more intense in post, you can use these. 
Um, and you can also stack all of these if you turn all of these onto screen mode in Photoshop, you pretty much recreate the full uh, lighting setup that you have in 3D. We have our Z depth here and we have post. So Z depth is down here in info passes and also ambient occlusion. And there's a ton of other stuff down here. Um, I don't really mess with these very often, but these are still very useful. If you want to change your Z depth uh, right here, if you move this slider, it'll change, you know, what's closer and what's further away. Like that. Same with AO, you can move that. I, I don't have it turned on right now, but what's really important and what you'll definitely want to use is render layer mask. So if you want to have a layer mask of all of your objects in your scene, so you don't have to and tool them out later, you can check these here. So over here, you'll do this in your octane object tag. So we have these butterflies here. You click the object tag, go to object layer. So I have layer ID five turned on for butterflies. So five over here, we'll render out a layer mask of the butterflies and so on. We have all of these turned on too. So that's really important for post. And yeah, so you wanna come up here and select where you wanna save your file, obviously. And make sure your export is set as EXR so you can get the highest quality out of your passes. So once you have your passes rendered out, you're going to want to come download this free plugin right here called exr.io, which will allow you to open them in Photoshop. I'll leave the link in the description for you guys. So once you open these up, it's going to look something like this. I have all my layer masks right here and all of my other passes down here. I'm not going to show too much on the Photoshop side of things since this is not a Photoshop tutorial. I'd rather save that for a separate video, but I'll show you how to utilize these layer masks for the people who don't know how. So once you open these up, you're going to want to select a mask. You can come over to channels and you can control click right here and it'll select the mask. And then you can come back and you can click this button down here that will create your mask so yeah you can whenever you want to use these you can just come back to this layer and control click and whatever new layer you make will have that mask on it and you can use those however you'd like so here i just wanted to show a before and after example of how you can use these passes to really just spice up your renders and make them pop a lot more as you can see the right image looks a lot more alive and has much more depth than the raw render on the left but yeah that's all the tips i have for you guys today i appreciate anyone who watched this this is my first tutorial so i apologize if it's a little dragged out but if you have any questions about anything feel free to leave a comment or you can message me on my instagram which is at three seater also let me know if there's any specific tutorials you would like to see in the future I'm also going to be creating a Patreon soon for more exclusive content and for anyone who wants to see a more in-depth look at my workflow. So once again, thank you to anyone who tuned in. And if you enjoyed this, a like or subscribe would be greatly appreciated. Peace out.